What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. So previously I was a mental health channel. I've rebranded more towards social commentary. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, <laughs> this video might be the dumbest thing I've ever done, but I had to make it. I had to make it, all right? So I have, I have a massive support system and something I learned a long time ago in recovery, which I'm trying to do even more so now, is that you gotta, you gotta bounce ideas off other people and get suggestions and get advice. And before I do anything, I try to ask somebody like, what do you think I should do, right? So this video might have some of the people in my support system, some of my YouTube mentors a little upset, but I just have to do this and here's why. I'm talking about why I haven't been making videos about Trisha Paytas because when this Nikocado Avocado thing first popped off, ever since it first popped off, I've gotten dozens, and I mean dozens of tweets, DMs, emails, and everything like that asking me to talk about the situation. And I've replied to quite a few of them, but something I hate doing, something I absolutely hate doing is answering the same question a million times, right? So for all of you who have been around for a while or all of you who are new, like I feel like I just need to make some kind of public video and discuss why I haven't been making videos about Trisha Paytas. Now, some of you who have been around for a while you know, you, you, you get it, right? But I wanna talk about the situation that I'm in and just explain some details around this thing. So let's rewind back in time. So I, I made a bunch of videos about Trisha Paytas when my channel was primarily mental health. And the goal of my channel was always to educate people about mental health, even though I'm not a licensed professional by any means, uh, but I wanted to educate people about mental health and also, what every commentary channel out there is doing is we're pointing out things that are out in the public eye and saying, is this okay or is this not okay? So a primary example of this thing was I made a bunch of videos about Trisha Paytas and her relationship with Jason Nash, right? So the goal of my video was, my videos was, this is not, this is not an example of a healthy relationship. And I took issue with the fact that their toxic relationship was being broadcast to millions of people and there's a there's a high chance that a lot of people are saying, oh, this is what a healthy relationship looks like. And I was coming in and I was using that as an example to say this is not what a healthy relationship looks like. Now, one of the difficult parts about doing commentary in any way, shape or form or just, just life in general is like intentions often don't matter, the result is what matters. And I never, I never intended on hurting Trisha Paytas, all right? I just saw a public figure and I was like, hey, let's talk about this, okay? And something else that I did, which got me a lot of backlash was talking about her vocalizing that she has borderline personality disorder. I advocate a ton for borderline personality disorder, and here's why. I first learned about this form of mental illness when I was working at the Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center for a little over three years, because many clients that I worked with had borderline personality disorder. And once I started learning about it, I started to learn more about the stigma around borderline personality disorder. There are mental health professionals who don't wanna work with people with borderline personality disorder. There are a lot of myths around borderline personality disorder and everything like that. Like a lot of people just do not understand borderline personality disorder. One of the things that I talk about when it comes to BPD is the fact that most of the time, from my experience and the research I've done and the books I've read, is that the person's symptoms of BPD are a result of some kind of trauma or traumatic childhood, right? So like, I think it's awful that people stigmatize BPD so much. So I saw an opportunity to educate and increase awareness about borderline personality disorder by using Trisha Paytas as an example because she opened up about her borderline personality disorder, which is kind of tricky because she goes back and forth between being diagnosed and not diagnosed. But anyways, 
I found that as a good way to educate people on what borderline personality disorder looks like and share what I've learned about the, the illness and how to get treatment and help for it. Because again, I'm not a licensed professional and all the videos I made discussing that, I said, go to a therapist, dialectical behavioral therapy is the best option, right? But again, I never intended on hurting Trisha Paytas, but eventually she saw my videos and she made a video, she made a few videos talking about me and all these other things and you know um the the biggest one that got traction was when she was in her car uh, eating a turkey sandwich many of you saw like she said she like attacked me quite a bit right like she said oh a drug addict is a drug addict um she talked about my physical appearance she talked about how you know i'm no longer with my son's mom and i live in a uh, uh, an apartment you know and all these other things just saying all these things about me um, iNabber, who is another commentary channel, he actually made a video about that. And a few other channels made videos about that issue, right? And, you know, I made some responses standing up for myself and, you know, explaining myself and everything. And everything, every, everybody was cool with it, but I screwed up. I screwed up big time by DMing other people when that situation happened and saying, like, Oh, did you see Trisha Paytas made a video about me, LOL? Something something along those lines. And it was it was messed up about me because the perception of that situation, I've explained it in an interview I did um, with Paul Grossclose. Um, like I screwed up because the perception of that was I was laughing at her pain. And that wasn't my intention, but that's how it was perceived. And I've learned from it, right? But that's created a snowball effect of what happened after that and a bunch of drama channels made videos about me and then there was all these other videos that came out and everything like that and this is why a lot of people are like chris just stay away just stay away from this topic you got heat and everything but anyways i ended up making an apology video i made a few apology videos but one was directed at trisha paytas and saying listen i'm sorry like i'm sorry and i ended up privating pretty much all the videos there's a few videos still up Ones that I didn't think were, you know, those were ones that never got brought up as being controversial. So out of like the dozen I made or so, there was probably like, I think there's like three or four that I didn't leave private that you can still go check out. Um, but anyways, I apologize to her and everything like that. So when I took my break from YouTube and kind of assessed my situation, what I'm gonna do and everything, I'm like, okay, don't talk about YouTubers for a while. By the way, that's really interesting because a lot of people are like commenting like, thought you weren't gonna talk about YouTubers anymore. I have literally never said that. And if you could find a clip of me saying, I will never talk about YouTubers again, all right. But anyways, so I took a break from talking about YouTubers when I came back to uh, YouTube. I talked about things about, you know, movie, TV shows, news, and everything like that. And I mentioned this in my Logan Paul uh, video I just made the other day. It was like, I can relate to him because I felt restricted on what I could talk about. So I finally started to ease back into talking about YouTubers. And part of that was rebranding my channel as a commentary channel. So one of the things is is that something when I was asking you guys for your advice and I want you guys to give me feedback and everything on this was the number one thing that came up was ask a person's permission before making a video on them. Now, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. If you look in the commentary community, if you look at the drama channels, do you really think that every commentary channel or drama channel gets permission first from the person they're making a video about? No, they don't. But I took that feedback into consideration. So, I have reached out to Trisha Paytas. I've reached out to her a few times. I've messaged her privately um, on Instagram saying, yo, hey, sorry about this. I've told her like, you know, hey, saw your video about this or whatever, you know, um, sorry that you're going through that. But just the other day, I actually shot her a DM saying, listen, because I was getting so many requests to talk about this situation. I said, listen, I said, hey, Trisha, um, because you could see that, like I see that she reads my DM. So I was like, yo, People want me to talk about you again on my channel, all right? I said, so would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with me talking about you on my channel like without talking about anything to do with mental health? Because that's what I'm trying to do now. Do commentary without talking about the person's mental health because it seems like that's the line that gets crossed that got me into trouble. So I DM that to her and she didn't reply. So I hope you guys understand the situation that I'm in where 
you guys want me to reach out to the YouTuber, like that that's what people consider ethical, to reach out to the YouTuber and ask their permission, but what do you do when they don't respond and you have your fans, your audience, your followers asking you to talk about a situation? Like that's the position that I'm put into. So because of this, like when the whole Nikki Cotto avocado situation popped off, like before anybody was making videos about it, people were reaching out to me. <laughs> I don't mean to sound all hipster about that, like I knew about that situation before anybody. But anyways, people were asking me, so like full disclosure, like I reached out to some other people in the community who do commentary and I'm like, yo, you know, like I'm, I'm like not off limits, like Trisha Paytas is off limits for me. Like, here's what's going on. You might want to make a video about it, right? And some of them did. And now more and more people are starting to do it. Uh, like even like Keemstar made a video about it, right? So like it got out there, right? But, you know, one of the things is, is seeing Nick Cotto, Avocado's story, like just my quick thoughts and opinions on it, it reminded me a lot of my situation, right? Where Trisha Paytas in a live stream, she started to create a narrative that I'm some obsessed stalker and she should feel in fear or danger. And that's kind of a tactic that she uses. And she used it on Nick Akato as well as like, oh my God, I'm in fear for my life and safety. And it's like, Really? So I've legitimately felt bad for Nick in that situation, especially because he's gotten so much backlash over the years about it. And Trisha Paytas, like I've been following the story and like people like I never have brought up, she's completely neglecting the real issues that people are having with it. But anyways, anyways, again, I wanted to make this video to give you all an explanation about this. So please give me feedback. Give me feedback. Now, now, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts for somebody in my position where you reach out, you ask somebody permission, they don't get back to you, you have you know, an audience, like I'm currently at a little over 80,000 subscribers, you have people requesting a video from you, like what do you do? Where does your loyalty lie? Because a weird line that some people have drawn in the commentary community is, like, it's okay to do commentary until you hurt somebody else's feelings, which I think is a weird line to draw because every commentary video is going to hurt somebody's feelings, right? When we have opinions on a situation, it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. So is it just not okay to make a video if it hurts somebody's feelings? And this is something that I'm gonna be talking about on my podcast, like not this specific subject, but just like these ideas and like the way people think because like, the other issue is you don't know if your video is going to hurt a person's feelings until you put that video out there. You see what I mean? So I think this is a bigger discussion to be had, you know? So I hope this video explains and gives, uh, you know, like just some, some thought processes I've been going through and everything like that. Like, um, I've tried to change and grow as a channel. I'm still working on that and everything. Any of you who caught my first episode of the podcast live stream la last night, you heard more of my thoughts about why I've rebranded this whole channel, um, you know, as like social commentary where I still talk about mental health every now and then. But anyways, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Like, what do you think I should do? Like, I will say this for accountability's sake for all of you out there. Because the fear, the fear that people in my support group have is like once I once I reopen that box making a video about Trisha Paytas like I am right now, I'm going to continue to make a bunch of videos about Trisha Paytas, get myself into trouble and da 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 da. So what I'm gonna say to all of you is I'm not going to make another video about Trisha Paytas for a while regardless of what happens. All right, I'm going to take in all of the feedback that you guys leave down in the comments, whether you like or dislike this video, whatever it is, videos, if people make videos about this situation, I'm gonna take that in and that will give me a better idea on whether I should cover Trisha Paytas stories with my thoughts and opinions on it in the future. So please do me a favor and provide me feedback down below because even still, I know mental health is still a touchy subject, but let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Like, 
you know, Nikocado Avocado brought up that she uses her mental health as a weapon towards people. I have thoughts and views about that. Like I've talked about Kanye West in the past. Trisha Paytas is talking about going back to therapy. And again, no ill intent towards Trisha Paytas. Like, I'm so glad that she's going back to therapy. I saw her video about her breakup with Jason and like, that's awful. And I feel terrible um, for her about that. But like, where's my responsibility lie to take that? Because just for example, if I was making videos about Trisha Paytas, I would have talked about her breakup with Jason. I would have talked about her situation with the hospital and the substances and everything like that. And I would have tried to turn that into a message for all of you to not be ashamed to get help because a breakup can be a traumatizing experience, all right? And again, I, I never meant to hurt Trisha Paytas with my videos, but I meant to use that as a gateway to help people out there who struggle with borderline personality disorder and try to advise you to get help, or it was more to create awareness for everybody who has all these myths and misconceptions about borderline personality disorder, all right? But anyways, I'm starting to ramble, so that's all I got. Make sure you leave comments down below. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. Hope this video cleared the air a little bit, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.